Hello and welcome everyone to another special episode of the I Work in Sport live interview. Uh, this is the last day of the week, the last um, one, the last episodes of this uh, short series called Meet the Programs, in which uh, a selection of our academic partners come and present uh, their courses and answer your questions. So those are programs that will be at the upcoming I Work in Sports Education Virtual Expo next week uh, on Wednesday, the 27th of October and as well on the 3rd of November, so the Wednesday after. Those are the two days that we'll be uh, holding that uh, online. And by the way, it's free to attend. If you want to connect in real time uh, with the admissions teams and alumni from some of the best sports management programs in the world, register. Uh, there is a link in the description below if you're watching on YouTube. Um, one big news of the week is that uh, we, I work in sport, we're offering a scholarship of uh, up to 5,000 euros to one of those candidates that uh, will attend the event. And then if they apply for one of the courses and are selected, so if you're admitted to the course, you will be eligible to receive that scholarship from us. So, um, as I said, take that uh, opportunity. And, uh, well, if we're just meeting, let me introduce myself. As my name says here, the, my name is Joe Fugerio. I'm the founder of I Work in Sport. And, uh, and uh, I would like to thank you for, for being here with us today, right? Um, if you're coming back, uh, you, know, you know the show. So you know that uh, we make this very interactive. We would like to have your participation. So start by telling us where you're watching from. Uh, also tell us if you have attended any of our events before or if you're planning to be at the Educational Virtual Expo next week. Um, in addition to YouTube and LinkedIn or where you may be watching this, we are also on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, Twitter. So you can find us as I Work in Sport and all of those places. Now, let me get to my guests. They're here uh, waiting to join me. Uh, today, we're going to talk to Rasmus Halbach. He is the founder of Anchor Sport Business Advisors and alumnus of the Johan Cruyff Institute, one of uh, the programs. And representing as well the, the Cruyff Institute, we'll have Ozana Marginian. I hope I said her name correctly, uh, who will be joining me as well. So let me get ladies first. Ozana, how are you? Good to see you. Hi, Joao. I'm very well. Uh, thank you for, for having me today. And hello to, to everyone watching. Um, thank you for taking the time to, to attend this uh, session. Great, great. Thank you for being with us. How are you, uh, Rasmus? Hi, Joao. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. So, Ozana, you are in Barcelona? Yes, as you can see here, uh, I'm at the office today with a nice uh, mountain view on um, this Friday afternoon. Um, and I'm, I'm here, yes, I'm, I'm with the Creek Institute for, for six years now. Uh, I'm an academic advisor. Um, so anything regarding um, programs delivered in English, um, I'm your person, and um, I'm also dealing with uh, with partnerships uh, and, and other jobs. Great, great. Um, and Rasmus, you're in Finland, yeah? That is correct. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any nice scenery to show you, but <laughs> yeah, I can tell you it's raining and it's cold. <laughs> Oh, let's um, so Ozana, you, you gave a brief introduction about yourself. Maybe just uh, then, uh, let us know as well where you're from. Are you um, Spanish? Are you from there, from Barcelona? How did you get to the the Crime <coughs> Institute? Uh, I'm a bit from everywhere, <laughs> but I was born in Romania. Um, that's where I'm from, and I also lived uh, a few years in in New York playing basketball. Uh, at college there, and then I also lived in the UK, um, and now I've been living here for for six years. 
So when I get to 10 years, I will also get my, my Spanish passport. So I'm also looking forward to that. Great. How about you, Rasmus? Uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, you did the Johan Cruyff um, program, one of them programs. So you're going to explain to us which one uh, you did. I think it was one of the online ones, right? Yeah. But yeah. tell us a bit of about um, your career, maybe what you did before, what you studied, and what took you to that path of doing a, a course in sports or sports management. Um, yeah, sure. Um... So, and, yeah, then, without... and then, of course, you can, you can tell us about uh, what you're doing as well with Anchor. Yeah. All right. So, um, so without telling you my whole life story, uh, in in short, I'm a I'm a Finnish uh, Finnish citizen. I've uh, I have a background in in handball. That's what I've uh, that's what I've played. Um, but work wise, yeah, as you said, I'm the founder of Anchor, which is a sports consulting. Uh, business uh sports consulting company we focus on organizational strategies for both clubs and federations and also offer um, management services to to handball players which again coming back to my background having played sort of like a natural assignment for me as well to to offer services and uh into work-wise before starting anchor i actually worked uh, at a law firm here in uh, in helsinki uh, it was a cross-border role. I worked for a, a, a sort of a, a group, uh, a group called the Client Relations uh, Support Service to the lawyers at the firm. It was a cross-border role, which meant that I, uh, I worked with uh, the other offices, which were Stockholm, Moscow, Moscow, and Saint Petersburg as well. So yeah, and then in terms of how I how I ended up here, how I ended up at the Johan Cruyff Institute. Um, uh, well, COVID, COVID hit, and uh, that unfortunately had a negative, negative impact on my business as well, um, which uh, meant that there was a little bit more downtime than usual, more than I would have liked. But again, I had for quite some time thought about the possibility to go back to school. Before Johan Cruyff Institute, I had a, I already had a bachelor's degree in sport management, but I, I wanted to, uh, to uh, sort of enroll back to school as well at some point to to get my master's which as a, sort of like a, as a silver lining i guess from the pandemic gave me more time to pursue this and i was lucky enough to get accepted right and what does uh, anchor do exactly so yeah um i work as a consultant for uh, for for sports clubs and and federations this means that well, i'm myself i'm focused more on strategic and organizational uh, things or par parts, which means that um, the the jobs actually vary quite a bit. I've undertaken jobs for uh, the Finnish Handball Federation. I've worked for uh, Finnish um, first league uh, soccer team or football team in terms of an esports project that they wanted to get off the ground. So, in terms of saying there, there really isn't one just one thing that we that I do. Uh, or that my company does, but there's a wi wide range of services. So everything from social media marketing to organizational, almost, I, mean, I'm, I wouldn't say restructuring, but uh, process development. All right. Okay, great. Before we jump into, sorry, into next uh, questions, I just want to give a shout out to some people watching us from all over the world. We have José Luis in Santos, Brazil. Oi, Zé. Nice to see you here. Dr. José, another José uh, Rodriguez from FIEP, F-I-E-P. Don't know where that is. So if someone can explain or you, José, if you can tell me what F-I-E-P is. Um, Otelo James has been with us uh, this week so he's comparing all courses so he's he's been here i think since since monday uh nice to see you again o otello uh, from dakar and also danta edt uh let's say uh, hi from from jamaica great to see you guys here i see that there's more people watching if you want to let us know where you're from that would be great as well and 
prepare your questions. If you have any questions yourself to Rasmus or Ozana, you can uh, write them here and we're gonna get to them. Also, Philip is also saying hi from South Africa. Hi, Philip, to see you here. Oh, Ozana, I think this is for you. Uh, so, in a nutshell, what is the Johan Cruyff Institute? You have multiple programs online and, and in person, but maybe paint a picture to everyone watching what uh, the Cruyff Institute is. Yeah, so we are a business school with a focus 100% uh, sport, um, meaning we offer education in sport management, sport marketing and sponsorship, football business and coaching. Um, we have different uh, campuses, uh, so here in Barcelona at the headquarters, and then we're also present in, in Amsterdam with the campus, in Mexico City, and also Lima. We also offer all our programs in uh, online, so the majority of our programs are available in the online modality, as Rasmus studied with us, uh, uh, coming from, from courses to postgraduate diplomas to, to master degrees. Um, so in, 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 in large, uh, this is what we do. Uh, I don't wanna get too much into detail, but the most importantly, uh, I think um, in this conversation, I will talk about our academic programs, uh, how you can study, where you can study, uh, the specialization, um, how you can build up credits, um, also the career services and opportunities that we offer. Okay, all right. Um, so uh, Rasmus, well, before I go to Rasmus, just let me let me just uh, tell you because I, I suppose that you're interested in knowing who's listening to you. So apart from those that I mentioned, a few others uh, uh, are saying hi here. Lokesh uh, in India. We have Muhammad Ali uh, in Sweden. Victor here in Lisbon. And. Mohammed is asking if you're Swedish, but uh, you already said you're Finnish, right? Yeah, I'm, I, I am. I am Finnish, but I, uh, but I do speak Swedish. I'm a Swedish-speaking Finn. <laughs> cool, there's, cool. A, there's a minority in Finland that do speak uh, that that speak Swedish as their mother tongue. Right. But I'm. I, I guess I would say I'm trilingual or quadrang quadrilingual. <laughs> cool, but in English, Rasmus. In English, tell us. How was then your experience at uh, at the, the Cruyff Institute, uh, the online course that you did? What exactly the cor was the course? Tell us how long it lasted and give us a bit of um, a sense of your experience doing taking that course. Yeah, okay. So the uh, the duration of the whole thing was, I think, 12, 12 months, uh, give or take. Uh, it's a bit, I mean, Ozana can probably chip in here, but it's... Uh, in terms of you can be quite flexible in terms of how how and when when you graduate but but um yeah i i really enjoyed myself i thought it was thought it was really good um obviously doing it online was i, I didn't really know what to expect beforehand i'd never what was, sorry online. what was the program exactly uh master uh sport management but online okay and uh yeah so i didn't really know what to expect to be honest uh studying online uh, I'd never done that before, but you know, right from the get-go, I thought it was quite straightforward in terms of how to sort of study. I mean, it took maybe a week to get used to the whole online virtual campus, but you know, it was the whole campus thing and how how, how everything was sort of structured was yeah, I I, I really enjoyed it. Cool. And so, and how did you learn about the course? So, yeah, the way I found out about the program was by Googling. <laughs> uh, when I, when, once I had sort of started to think about studying again and doing a master's, I immediately knew that I wanted to do it online just because, you know, because of COVID, there was no, you know, real opportunity to actually like move somewhere or anything that would have wouldn't have fit my my life at that point so i wanted to do it online so i started googling and uh, then at, then i found i found several good candidates but then i ended up after having like read more and more about the johan Cruyff institute um 
the sort of the choice f fell on that. So it wasn't it wasn't a really it wasn't a complex search process by any means. But but I like I would say that maybe. When you, when you mentioned you came across others, what uh, made you decide to uh, take that one? Well, there's a there are a few Finnish uh, alumni from from the Johan Cruyff Institute, uh, and I actually got in touch with them and uh, on LinkedIn and asked and asked them how their experiences had been and if they could like if if they liked it and uh, and if they felt that they sort of got got what they wanted from from it and and uh, the feedback from them were was was positive uh, overwhelmingly so so it made the, the choice quite much easier had, they, had they, your friends they they did the online course as well or they had the in campus uh, well? yeah yeah one and i wouldn't call, call them my friends they they were a sort of uh, acquaintances or or yeah. even as an example is one one guy who uh, actually nowadays works for uh, as a sports director for one of the largest hockey clubs in Finland he was kind enough to uh, well answer when i reached out to him and we had a brief discussion over the telephone and yeah it sort of made the choice to uh, pursue Johan Cruyff Institute then a lot more a lot like a lot easier so but but so they they're the background with um, the Cruyff Institute was also doing the online courses? Yeah. Okay. And that was the first uh, online program that you did? Yes. Yeah. Um, as I said, I have a bachelor's degree in sport management, but that's from a university, which is which yeah. is on site uh, in, in, in Sweden, actually. <clears throat> and, and the online experience was what you expected. Can, can you tell us more about sort of the, how long it took when you started and how did the uh, credits uh, sort of work and how when you graduated? So I started in September 2020, I think. I think it was in September. And I graduated in at the end of August, I believe. Uh, again, I'm a very I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm a fresh alumni, I would say. But uh, I in terms of the amount of courses, uh, Ozana could probably chip in here and in terms of with, with more of the inf actual information of the course but i thought the tempo was was really good uh it, it suited me at at um at the uh at the position i was in uh with uh, a little bit more time on my hands it, it suited me perfectly to also have the certain type of flexibility to uh to take the courses um not sure if that answers your question but yeah it took it took 11 12 months and but that was full-time studies again um so yeah. right yeah so it, it does take uh, a full-time commitment you think i would say so i mean again you can i mean all every time you study something you can choose to go full you know full throttle and read everything and re or read, read as much as you can and you know try to get a great grade from everything or then you can try to sort of breeze through everything which I, I I wouldn't think that that would really work here. But um, the the thing is the thing what, that I liked was that it gave me uh, like the flexibility to 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 do everything on my own time, which is which meant that as an example, one of a day a normal day could look like this: I woke up, then I studied for an hour or two, then I worked for eight hours, and then I maybe studied a little bit in the evening as well. But that flexibility of not having not having to be at the school at a certain time really made it a lot easier for me to sort of work through it. Right, uh, Ozana, I'm gonna ask you in a second um, what is it that you look for in candidates. Then you can talk about the candidates for the online programs, but also for uh, <clears throat> the ones that are in person. But before that, I want to uh, ask about other thing because I did a master's uh, as well but in person so it was a very close connection with the class how is that um, the, the connection that you have with other uh, classmates do you also have group projects you get to get some um, do you uh, build a network in the the online program as well so yeah I mean obviously doing it doing 
doing a master's online is different than doing it on site because you're not going to be able to meet your your uh, classmates face to face in the same to the at least to the same extent that you would uh, on site. That being said, I mean since I graduated, I I keep in touch with a couple of my classmates and we've met in person since then. Uh, but of course, it's not this. It's obviously not going to be the same. It, it would be. <laughs> I would be lying if I would say that that would be a completely same doing it online and then doing it on site. Right. But again, and then, but then in terms of the network that you were speaking of, um, I believe I'm connected with almost all of my classmates that I, that I studied with on LinkedIn and, and have written with them from time to time as well. So, so I wouldn't say that it sort of negates the, the network building aspect. But of course, it's not it's not going to be the same as studying with somebody uh, along, alongside somebody on site. Right. One person that uh, shares that uh, same experience or a similar one is Lokesh. So he wrote a message here that uh, he also did the sports management uh, online in the past year as well. Lokesh, let us know which one you did. Uh, we're interested in knowing. And uh, Jose Pacheco is saying hi from Brazil. Hello, Jose. Nice to have you with us. If you have any question, just write down in the comments. Rosanna, so as I mentioned, I would like to know what is it that you look for in candidates? I imagine that you have a, a good number of candidates for pretty much all of your courses. Yeah. I know that um, depending on the course, it's a quite rigorous uh, selection. <coughs> process. You can't take everyone also because you know, of space and all. So what is it that uh, you look in candidates? Yeah, so um, of course it, it depends very much on the program, but uh, in general, we have some uh, general admission requirements. So for courses, um, our courses can be accessed directly on our website. We do recommend uh, to, to, have, to have a high level of English to be able to follow the course successfully, um, and maybe also some knowledge of business or, or sport management. Um, but there is no pre-selection process for our courses. For the postgraduate diplomas, uh, the same as the master degrees, uh, this I'm talking online, we uh, require if a bachelor's degree. So if in the case that you do not have a bachelor's degree, for example, we do have a lot of professional athletes who study with us, who have managed to get their degrees, they can still um, access our postgraduate and masters if they have more than three years experience on the playing field. Again, if uh, you have been working for 10 years and you don't, do not have a bachelor's degree, you can still enter the admission process for postgraduates uh, and master diplomas um, online. And then for our on-campus programs, for example, for the master in football business uh, in partnership with FC Barcelona, this one uh, we do require uh, at least three years experience working and a bachelor's degree, preferably in the business um, field. And then for the official degree, which we offer in partnership with uh, Universitat Automat de Barcelona, um, because this is um, a credited degree by the Ministry of Education of Spain, we require um, a bachelor of four year university degree to access. And again, in the selection process, there is an interview where uh, the academic department assesses if, um, of course, the motivation to study, uh, why they choose to study with us, uh, the background, the uh, relationship shift to sports, the passion for sports, and also um, if, if the person is really um, kind of available and has some availability to study online and is also motivated to study online because it's very different than, than having someone to always push you if you come yeah. on campus and a professor then and then being very proactive yourself. Yes, sure. Thank you for that. There's some more people saying hi here to us, just so you know. Now from Egypt, um, Safia Adzam, she was actually in the um, in the stream here yesterday. Uh, she did the, the CIS one uh, in Egypt. And Hisham Bugrada, uh, how are you, Hisham? Good to see you. Um, there is a question already here from Jose Pacheco. So I was going to jump to my own question, but I'll go to his first. How does the online course deal with the on-field experience that the regular course has? Is there, in any of your online courses, uh, Osana, do you have any 
Um, did they meet at uh, any time? Is there any uh, field visit or anything like that or not at all? Well, there, we organize study trips. Usually they are organized for the on-campus students, but the online students can attend as well. So, for example, we have a study trip in, in Amsterdam every year where if you want as an online student, uh, you can attend and you can meet all the other students from the Master in Sport Management on campus. Um, again, if you study online, it is not mandatory to come to, to Barcelona at all, uh, but you can if you want to, to, and also for the graduation as well, and to present your uh, final project. Right, great. Did, did you participate in any of that, uh, Rasmus? Did you have the opportunity? Oh, I would have had the opportunity, but I uh, I did not uh, attend. I, I attended the graduation ceremony, uh, which was in Barcelona. But uh, yeah, again, due to COVID, there wasn't really yeah. that much of a... Definitely. It was a tricky... Well, we're in tricky times, difficult yeah. times. Now, you, you're you saying that you came from the world of sales in, in a law firm. So yeah. how was your the transformation to the sports sector? You studied that before. You said that you study have a bachelor in sports management, but then you went to work with something totally different. How was that uh, transition to actually starting to work with sport? Well, compared to the compared to the job that I did beforehand, which was again where it worked as a sales coordinator at, at the law firm. Um, again, it's a it's a support function, which means that you assist people. Uh, so in that regard, the uh, the jump to the sports world wasn't that big of a jump as you might expect. I mean, obviously the, the biggest thing, I guess, uh, is that, you know, I, I, I went from working for a law firm to starting my own company, which had, you know, completely other sort of hurdles to jump through in order to, uh, you know, get things up, up and running. But, and also, I mean, I, I, as I have, a background in sports i sort of know the field uh, i know the, the the types of people working and and also i had some contacts beforehand so it wasn't like i jumped into something that was completely new to me either but i mean for sure there's 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 always hurdles and and stuff that you need to think about but i, I wouldn't say that the transformation was that or the the jump was that big to be honest right okay uh, thanks for that. There's someone uh, saying hi to you here. So, hello, <laughs> Michael. Don't know if you know him or not, but he's watching from no. Brazil and saying hi. Um, hello. There is a couple of people here watching from uh, Ghana. Now it's moving fast here. Let me see if I get all of them. Cynthia uh, and John Mark Fobi, both of them watching from Ghana. Um, there's a, well, now I'm gonna start to divide my attention here because there's a few questions and comments, comments arriving. But while I do that, why don't I ask you, Rosanna, what's the applic what is the application process like? I know that uh, they will be very different depending from the courses. Also, <clears throat> maybe let us know that the main points from um, the, the courses that you have on site. And, and yeah. online, also if there are some key dates uh, where people need to to apply or if they can apply throughout the year, please let us know yeah. how that works. Yeah, so for our online programs, um, postgraduate diplomas and, and master degrees, um, these programs start twice a year. So in September and also in February. So our next edition of the Master in Sport Management um, online and Master in Sport Marketing and Sponsorship, also the postgraduate diplomas, we have four of them, uh, they will start in February. Um, the application process is quite straightforward. So as soon as you are decided on the program, you just have to fill out the, the form on our website. Uh, I'll contact you right away and, and guide you through, through the next steps. There is no interview for the postgraduate diplomas. Um, but you do need to upload uh, your CV, a cover letter, and a copy of your of your degree if you have it. Then the academic department uh, evaluates your application, and we get back to you with uh, the final decision. And in that case, the the payment information for the masters. Um, again, you have to upload your your CV, a cover letter, and a copy of your degree. 
and then you will have an interview with the academic department about a week after you applied. Um, and you can apply until basically the start date of the course, of course, maybe a week before, so it's not the then, so you have some time. Uh, basically until, let's say, February 10th, uh, you can apply for the online programs. For the on-campus program starting in September, we recommend applying as soon as possible because uh, places do fill out quite quickly. So um, the how, deadline how will be around... Do you take, sorry, how many students do you take uh, in each class? It depends on the program, but I would say around 30. Uh, maybe for the Master of Business, a bit less. Um, in partnership with FC Barcelona, but around 30. Um, and the classes are, are quite full. So better to apply as soon as possible. And especially if you want to move to Barcelona, uh, yeah, get that uh, get that going quickly. Right. Good, good, good to know. Um, by the way, for those uh, on-site uh, programs, so in-person, imagine that you have a number also of guest speakers and some field trips. Uh, in the program maybe could you give us some examples yeah so um, we do have field trips included in the on-campus programs a lot of activities a lot of visits to different football clubs um, seminars we bring a lot of guest, guest speakers from different fields so we try to make it as interactive as possible um, and also it's it's our programs are, are based on, on networking um, and learning from from all different um, kind of executives so specifically for example for the for the master in football business um, the first week is attendance at the world football summit in madrid uh, this is um, already two days of the program that all the students go there and they get to participate in all the in all the talks um, then throughout they have other study trips to different football clubs in the north of spain uh, they also travel outside of the country um, the, the study trip to Amsterdam again this year is going to be in December for all the students. Mm -hmm. um, and then here uh, you also get to visit a lot of a lot of uh, facilities in, in the Catalonia area. Cool, cool. Um, there is a question here from uh, Jose Pacheco. Before that, just to mention that uh, Lokesh said that he did the, uh, well, he did two courses here. The one CIS executive program one and one by NASM uh, uh, in, in the US, I think. Uh, Jose Pacheco asks, uh, does the Mexican and Peruvian institutes have the same experience as the European ones? And are the Latin institutes focused in Latin football markets, in the Latin football market? Uh, well. I think, yeah, I guess they're quite different and um, mostly they bring their own experience and it's focused more on that market indeed. Um, so again, for, for the institutes there, it's better to get in touch with them and ask them any questions you want, but the education there is, is delivered in Spanish. Um, so if, if you want to study there, it's probably like the students that study there are mostly from the area who also want to stay in that area and work. Right, thank you. So, Rasmus, you already had um, your work as a consultant in the sports area. Yep. So my question is, what did the program bring to your work as a consultant? So, um, working, working as a consultant, you need to be uh, aware of a lot of things uh, in the market and, and sort of what's new. So, in terms of what it brought, um, I would say that I'm definitely a better consultant now than I was than than I was before before I started studying. Um, what we dealt with uh, a lot during the, the during the masters were a lot of the, our assignments were um, case studies, which means that you look at well, old cases, see how they did stuff, and what you would have brought to the table, uh, and then. You know, we took took it from there, which I really think benefited me uh, a lot, uh, as it gave sort of new approaches and new new I guess tools tools that I could use uh, in, in my day to day job. If that makes any right. sense. Right. <laughs> uh, no, no, it does. I just had a, a bit of uh, lagging here in the in the video. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks about that. 
Rosanna, actually, I just want to go back to the, the question that uh, Jose about the you have programs in Latin America for people attending, mm -hmm. special especially from that region when they go to the events, or especially the week after or the third of November when we're going to do that in the their time zone. Let's say, will will they be able to get information about those programs too at the at the booth? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we can definitely inform them and we can, uh, if they, if, of course, pass us the, the contact information, we can put them directly in touch with uh, our centers there. All right. Maybe um, one thing that I would like to, to ask you, Zana, is about for anyone that is thinking of uh, doing courses at um, the Johan Cruyff Institute, what are the tuition fees? What's, uh, how much they should be prepared to pay? Yeah, so um, as I said, we offer also specialized courses uh, between these are between three and, and six credits, depending on the course. Uh, all our specialized courses are basically modules that are part of our postgraduate diplomas and master degrees. So a course ranges from 646 euros to 1040 euros. Uh, this one would be a six credit course, 1040, and a three credit course would be 646 euros. Um, Postgraduate diplomas online, um, they're around 4,400 euros. These are uh, six, seven months. And the master's degrees online are 7,920 euros. Um, all these can be paid in installments. Uh, Postgraduate dipl post diplomas and master's can be paid in uh, two or three installments. Um, and also, if you pay in full, you receive like a 3% discount. Uh, master in football business in partnership with FC Barcelona is, is uh, around 20K. Uh, okay, which can also be paid in, in three installments. This is the program on campus here in English. Um, and then we have other programs um, in Barcelona, which are delivered in Spanish, um, which are around 8,800 euros. Um, then we have the official degree with Universitat Automat de Barcelona, also delivered on campus uh, in Spanish. It's around 10,000 euros. And then we have uh, our programs in Amsterdam, Master in Sport Management in English. Um, this one uh, also around um, 8,000 euros and the master in coaching uh, delivered in Dutch or in English again in, in Amsterdam uh, mm -hmm. is 8,800 euros. A lot of <laughs> numbers there. So uh, just contact me if you, if you have questions. Yeah, if, if they need more details, again, they will be able to, to meet with you in person as well yeah. next week to get all that information. I suppose that they can find it on your website too. Um, and just another thing, um, we, we talked about the selection the selection process. For the online courses, are there also um, the selection process? So what, what is it needed to, to participate? Or anyone can um, buy and, 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 and do the course? Yeah, anyone can, can sign up directly on the website for the course uh, just before it starts. So they, all our courses have specific start dates. <laughs> Um, and you can sign up directly um, on the website. So There's no pre-selection. For the online one, you don't have a limit for the size of the class or the um, No. You can have as many students as, okay. Good, good to know, good to know. And just uh, maybe just as an additional information, since we're, we're talking uh, about money, let me continue on that topic, um, especially Barcelona in Amsterdam. Maybe you want to give some tips in terms of cost of living for people uh, that would be planning to go to those cities to study with you? Um, yeah, uh, Barcelona is cheaper than Amsterdam, that's for sure. So, um, I mean, cost of living can, re can range depend uh, on what you want. And I mean, you can rent a room here in Barcelona for about 500 euros, uh, an apartment for, you know, from 800 to you know unlimited <laughs> depending on how you want to live and then uh or you can book uh, airbnb a hotel so for the students that come here uh, and, and and stay here for the full year we usually assist them with different resources um so we send them options uh to to try to find accommodation in barcelona and they also they we try to put them in contact all the students if they want to you know book an apartment together and share uh, it's better to be with, with a colleague from school, of course. 
Um, so that's what we try to do for the students that come on campus. In Amsterdam, I'm not so familiar with the prices, um, but uh, I'm sure we can find an information for you if you're interested. Right. And what about scholarships? Do you offer any? So we have uh, the Creef Athlete Fund, uh, which is around, we offer around 10 scholarships per year for our postgraduate diplomas and masters. Uh, we have some prerequisites for the Creef Athlete Fund, so athletes approaching retirement or athletes from minority sports, athletes from minority countries. Um, all this information you can find on careerathletefund.com. Um, these are the main scholarships that we offer every year, and then we all offer different discounts to our partners. We have more than 100 partners in the sports industry, uh, ranging from player associations to federations to clubs to companies, um, and uh, members, staff, and athletes of these uh, organizations can access our programs with a discount. Um, this is what we offer at the moment, and then sometimes we have different campaigns, um, which we offer, again, uh, some discounts for athletes. Right. Are there scholarships for online programs? Uh, the Creek Facet Fund are only for online, yeah. Ah, it's for online. Good yeah. to know, good to know. And another question is, now once they, once they go and graduate, like Rasmus uh, here, but also the people uh, studying on site, is there any kind of career support to the students? Yeah. So our career services um, is also throughout the, the study period, not only for, for our alumni. So basically, we send out biweekly job offers, uh, not only from our partners, but also from the job industry, from the sports industry in general. So this arrives to their inbox. Uh, we try to organize different events. Uh, we try to um, give uh, different entrance discounts to uh, uh, summits and, and conferences. Um, but regarding uh, specifically um, job opportunities, um, this is this is what we do. And then, of course, we work with you guys um, to try to offer other opportunities and, and try to uh, attend the fair that you have. Um, so, yeah, we just try to, to, to offer different resources. But, uh, of course, the students and alumni um, have to, to be proactive and take advantage of these resources that we offer and the network that we have. Cool. And uh, just one more before I go uh, back to Erasmus. Typically, what do your alumni go and do after the program when they graduate? Uh, well, we have a great example here <laughs> through, through Erasmus, but uh, you can do many, many things and working in sports. A lot of uh, alumni have started their own companies. Um, others work in, in football clubs, in sports organizations, in marketing departments of big companies, in sports sponsorship departments of big companies. Um, you can work uh, in um, uh, sports foundations, and it's it's unlimited options. I think in sports these days, uh, it's just of course going to towards what you're connected to, towards what your passion is, and um, towards uh, your own your own um, field of choice um yeah great thank you so rasmus I'd like to know if you would recommend the the program to professional well to anyone in general but also let me be more specific for either for people that are not working in sports if you would recommend and why and but also for professionals that are already working in sport if you would recommend same course that you did let's say the the online one that <laughs> Yeah, the short answer is yes. I, yeah, the short answer is yes. I would I would recommend it. Um, I think one of the one of the things that sort of plague the sports industry as as a whole is that a lot of people working in sports don't necessarily have the education to do the job that they are doing. <laughs> uh, which uh, maybe it sounds controversial, but in my experience, that is the case, and that means that if you want to work in sports, I think the sports sector in general needs these kinds of educations. Uh, I think getting an education in sport management is is truly beneficial if you want to work in sports. You get a lot of insight in terms of you know what to do, but also, I guess, what not to do, um, which was evident from a lot of the case studies that we did uh, when I studied. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend it for, for sports professionals as well. 
not only if you just want to brush up on your sort of knowledge of the sports sector, because again, the the sports sector in general does move quite fast. It's a rapidly changing uh, industry, which you can you know see from post COVID how mo- many uh, clubs and organizations have reacted. Uh, not uh, only you- in terms of marketing and esports, as an example, but but yeah. Uh, then for people not not involved in sports, I mean, obviously, if studying sport management, most of the things that you're going to learn is tailored towards sports. So if you don't have an interest in that, then probably not for you. But if you have an interest in sports and you want to learn about business and stuff, yeah, I think it's good. Cool. What was the the favorite your favorite uh, thing in 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 the program? The favorite course, like favorite lecture, uh, or 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 parts of the program that you enjoy the most? No, well, because of my work, I I, I really enjoyed the the marketing modules as well as the uh, strategic um, strategic management courses. I, I I enjoyed myself there. And that that's also actually where uh, some of our best group, in my opinion, best group sort of assignments were, which gave me time to uh, you know talk to my classmates as well so so i really enjoyed those ones and again th- those were probably one of the one of the modules that sort of benefited me most as a professional as well so so yeah i would say that those were my highlights cool thank you Rosanna, there is a question here for you so yep actually two questions in, in one from michael he says, Rosanna, forgive me my question. For those who are not able to afford the fee and live, as, as, as his example, in Brazil, is there a way for you to send a team of professionals to give a course in person to other uh, places? He continues here, I also represent West Africa. Is it possible to come to West Africa countries to give these lectures? <laughs> uh michael i'd suggest you you just you contact me and we have a call regarding this because uh, it seems like a long discussion um i mean uh, it will probably be a, a long shot but we can talk about it of course do, do you have some partnerships um like for instance the the courses that you have in in latin america for instance in peru or, or mexico mm-hmm. are done entirely by is that johan cruyff institutes you have a, an office there or is that partnerships with other universities how does that work how does that work um well usually our professors are um, professionals that are working in the sports industry and they come and give lectures um and yeah it's it's uh, we have our own center there and they they run by itself um and of course we are we're in close contact with them for everything they offer and we collaborate we also collaborate with other other universities and other um, institutions. Um, we also offer a lot of um, webinars uh, when it comes to this uh, online. We offer different uh, short short seminars. For example, the Football Industry Insights Seminar Series um, in Barcelona, one week in, in June. Well, next year it will be it will be in April. And we also offer uh, Football Industry Trends, La Liga Study Case uh, in Amsterdam, which will also be in April next year. Um, so we have um, a lot of a lot of things going on. It's, it's, it's better to follow us on, on social media um, and look on our website. And if there are any opportunities that you might find interesting to collaborate with us, um, please reach out. Um, and again, we are we are expanding a lot more. We have agents uh, all over South America. We have uh, representatives and agents also in in here in Europe. Um, so this is this is how we expand. Yeah. All right. Okay. So Michael, if you need want to talk to more about Rosanna about that, just uh, join the events next week. She will be there. You're gonna have a direct video chat with her. Yeah. Uh, and there will be other people from the Johan Cruyff Institute there as well as some alumni. Before we we wrap up, um, Rosanna, just uh, to recap, for next week, how many programs will be, um, let's say, advertising or or promoting at the the event? Will it be all of them or will we be concentrating on a few? No, all of them. I mean, we have more than 90 academic programs um this in different languages of course in spanish english and dutch 
Um, so we will, you'll have, you can find information about all of them. Um, we will be there to help you with any questions. Of course, I understand it's, it's a lot of options we offer, uh, but that's what uh, we're here for. So we can uh, solve all your doubts about this. How, how many alumni do you have if you count all your programs, do you know? Uh, well, on campus um, this year, we have more than 300 um and online i'm not really sure but in general we have had more than one five thousand on campus and more than eight thousand online well so are they are they connected somehow are you rasmus do you have now a group where you can connect with all of them how um does that work once once they graduate do you get all connected or not really so there's a there's an uh there's an alumni platform of Johan Cruyff Institutes, but um, I'm not super familiar with that. I've, I've logged on a couple of times. Uh, the guys that I've been uh, in sort of connected to or, or in, in touch with since I graduated are the guys that, uh, or the people that I, I studied with myself. So, so yeah, I guess there's, there's, there's a definitely an avenue, but I, I haven't explored it that much yet, to be honest. All right. Um, a a anything else that we should cover before we go, Ozana? Actually, before you answer that, I'm going to ask people that are still here watching us. There's a good number of people. If they can hit that uh, the like button, right? If they're interested in that type of content, uh, want to also subscribe to the channel. We're always talking to, to courses or professionals that come here and share the knowledge, their experience, their advice to, to anyone that uh, wants to work in sport or even if they are already work in sports if they want to accelerate their career to boost their career so um please do that but now uh Ozana, before we go and, and rasmus as well anything else that we should cover um i don't think so i think we covered uh, quite everything uh, i'm sure there will be more questions at the next uh, next week is it yes um, wednesday yeah so yeah next week i'll be there and uh, i'll be happy to to have a call with you um and we'll see if there are any more any more doubts about our programs well before before we go we have a last minute uh, question here let's see what that is daniel moncayo says could you talk about your partnership with liga pro and the opportunities that it presents for alumni uh i wouldn't be the person for that but my colleague uh, my colleagues um next week will be there to to help you with that i'm not really involved with that partnership and uh, yeah better to, to 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 be there next week okay so daniel sorry uh, come and connect next week so we can yeah. talk directly with someone uh from there rasmus yeah. let me thank you for being here it was nice meeting you likewise uh, thanks for having me let, let's uh, keep connected and yeah it was definitely great to talk to to both both of you and to everyone watching at home thank you again for being here with us it was super nice to have your participation your questions normally well as usual they are much better than my own so it's <laughs> it's great to to have you all there and i see you soon next yep. uh, week we'll be 100% focused in the Education Visual Expo. So that will be on Wednesday. If you haven't registered yet, there's a link uh, on the description. It's free to attend. If you're selected, for instance, to a, a, a Johan Cruyff Institute program, as I said, we are offering one scholarship to one lucky winner uh, of those. So do that. It will be great to see you there. See you soon, everyone. Thanks for thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Don't Thanks. leave yet. I'm just gonna finish this and I'll get back to you. Bye bye, guys. Ciao. Bye.